Okay, everyone. Um, in the last tutorial this week, we are going to talk about arc length, arc length of curves, and how to calculate them. So what we're going to do is just do some, some questions from chapter 5. And we're going to start off easily, and then we'll move on to something a little bit more difficult. OK, so um, as I go, I'll, I'll incorporate the questions into my solution. So, so you, know, you don't have to keep flicking through your, um, your set of questions. All right, so in the first question, we are asked to consider the curve described by the following function. Now, you'll see that we're only interested in the interval, uh, the x values from 0 to 1, and we're asked to calculate the arc length of this curve. Now, there's a definite formula for the arc length that relies, anyone remember what, what, how you derive the formula, what, what the basic idea is? Yep. So. Um, I guess geometrically, triangles, right? It's, um, it's uh, Pythagoras' theorem, right? That's the basic way I remember the, um, the arc length formula anyway. Right, so... Right, so I'm just going to let L denote the arc length. So by f dash here, I mean df dx. Hmm. So the challenge then is to, in many cases with the computation, is to manage the square root sign away. Okay, sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's, it's more difficult. So let, with this one, it's, it's fairly easy. But let's actually go through and compute these, these parts and then see what, what our calculations give us. So let, I'm going to refer back to this. So let's calculate the derivative of our function. So it's going to be something like uh, 3 on 2 x to the 1 half. And so... we'll get the following. So this is going to be like 9 on 4x. Okay. Now, this is going to go in here. Now, when we integrate it, we're integrating, you know, the highest power is, is 1, right? I guess, you know, inside the, inter inside the square root sign. So is that going to be a problem for us to integrate? No. Okay, if it was a squared or something, it would be a little bit more challenging, right? So it's not, it's not too bad. So our A and B are going to be the endpoints of our X interval. And this is 1 plus 9 on 4 times X dx. Now to integrate this, it's just... The, the square root is going to go to a 3 on 2, and I just need to clean up um, by, some, by multiplication or division, I guess. So it's going to go to a 3 on 2. So I'll get something like that. Hmm. So now when I plug in x equals 1 and x equals 0, I can clean this up a little bit. And I'll get something like this, according to my calculations. Okay, and then if you want to sort of rearrange this, you can get the following. Okay. 
Okay? Right, so, how, so that's pretty easy, right? That's pretty easy on the, on the difficulty scale. Now, this is a case where the function, or, the, or I guess the graph, is described using a function. Okay, y equals f of x. But there are other ways of describing graphs, right? You can describe them parametrically. You can describe curves using, oh, oh, sorry, there are other ways of describing curves, right? You can use a parametric representation. You can use, say, polar coordinates. So let's have a look at another, another um, fairly, fairly straightforward example. But here, we're going to, in, in the next example, we're going to use so-called parametric description. Okay, so, so this is three part C. So here is our basic description. So you can see the x coordinate has it is a function of t, the y coordinate is a function of t, and we're going from these from this point to this point in the plane, okay? So we're going from x equals zero, y equals zero to x equals eight, y equals eight. So that's the that's the curve. So, so our equations are in so-called parametric form. Now the reason why it's important to distinguish between this example and the last example is that the arc length formula changes, right? Now the first thing, so, so essentially what the arc length is going to be, in, it, it's going to be in terms of t and, and dt. We're going to be integrating something involving t. That should be, the, so that's a cube there, right? Okay. Now let's firstly work out the interval, the t values that this curve actually um, goes between. So this is x value, this is a y value, this is an x value, this is a y value. Can anyone suggest how we might work out the t values? For the endpoints? Yep. Yeah, so, so what do you think the first the first um, point will um, the t value rep will represent? Zero. zero, right? Yeah. So t will be zero there. And what about here? Two, two right? Yep. Yeah, so t equals two. Yeah. So. So just you know, plug zero in there, zero in there, solve. T's, t's got to be zero. Plug eight in there and four in there. T's got to be two. Okay, so the arc length. in parametric form is the following. So x prime of t all squared plus y prime of t all squared dt. So you can see how it kind of, um, well, it's slightly different to the, the, the previous setup we had. Okay, so in this case the alpha would be 0, the beta would be 2, and we just need to calculate the derivatives from this starred parametric setup. Okay, so I'm going to call this um, double star. 
And so let's calculate these derivatives. x prime is going to be 3t squared. y prime is going to be 2t. So let's square these, add them together, and see if we can manage this square root sign away. Okay, so let's square those. I'm going to get 9t to the power 4 plus 4t squared. Now you can see there's a common factor. We're going to have to take the square root of this. There's a common factor of t squared, and actually that's going to help us in the integral. So let's take this, put it back in here, and integrate from, zero, from t equals 0 to t equals 2. Let's take out a factor of t squared in here, and that when we square root of it, it will just give you t. So now again, we're at the position where we need to integrate this expression. We've got a 9t squared plus 4 inside the square root sign, but we can balance that with this of t, right? So when I integrate it, it's going to be something like 9t squared plus 4 all to the 3 on 2. And then I have to balance it up here, right? So I'm going to get 2 thirds, and the derivative of that's going to be 18. So I need to divide by 18. So all I need to do now is plug in t equals 2 and t equals 0 and take one away from the other. How are you doing those integrals? Okay, well, um, you can, if you really want to do it, you could do it by um, substitution. Okay, so you would let u, if you wanted to do this integral by substitution, you would let u equal 9t squared plus 4. Yep. You should, I mean, you should be able to run the, it's just the chain rule backwards, right? You should, you should be able to do that. that I mean, you, it'll take you a little bit. It'll take you a little bit um, to do it. But you should, uh, you should be able to do that by inspection, right? If you can't, that's OK. You've got backup. You can do it by, by substitution. But here, we, you only use substitution as a last resort, right? Only as a last resort. OK, so if you sub in, according to my calcs, you get something like this. And then you can clean that up if you want to so it's like following. So that's a little bit different from, from the previous one, right? Now, you may think, OK, well, what does the graph of this look like? Anybody know? Anyone? have an idea of how you might be able to find out what the graph of this sort of curve looks like? Well, what you can do is sort of, to put it in sort of a Cartesian form where you've just got x's and y's, you can sort of substitute out the t. So sort of put the, make t the subject here, so you have t equals root y, and then sub that in there for, for t. So you get some sort of equation involving x and y, all right? 